Australia is in an extinction crisis. We have the worst mammal extinction record in the world. At Zoos Victoria alone, we are working with 27 threatened species that are at risk of becoming extinct in the next 20 years. But there's one animal that's giving us hope that we can win this fight against extinction. And that animal is the Eastern Barred Bandicoot. These guys once occupied an area from pretty much Melbourne to the South Australian border, but they're now declared as extinct in the wild on the mainland. They can actually populate areas really rapidly. They have a 12 and a half day gestation. They wean the young at around 50 days. And shortly after that, they're left to fend for themselves. They then can breed themselves from three months old. So why, when they're such prolific breeders, why are they endangered? Well, with European settlement, over 99% of the native habitat has been destroyed. This has mostly been converted to farmland. Now, we know that if this was the only threat that eastern wild bandicoots faced, they'd still be in the wild on the mainland today, just like they are in Tasmania. The reason they're not is because they have a bigger threat, the red fox. And in places where there's foxes, we just simply cannot sustain a bandicoot population. And the last place they were found in the wild is in Hamilton. And there, there are a few hot spots for bandicoots in Hamilton. These included the Hamilton Community Parklands, the Kennedy Oval, which is the local sports field, the Grange Burn, that's a creek that runs around the city, and the local tip. Yes, there were bandicoots nesting in disused car bodies in the local tip. But this population was also declining. In the 1970s, there was thought to be a 1,000 bandicoots left. And in 1988, there could have been as few as 150 bandicoots left in Victoria. So it was at this time that the Eastern Barb Bandicoot Recovery Team was formed because they knew that if they didn't act quickly, we would lose this animal to extinction forever. So the first thing they started to do was collect as many animals as they could from the wild to start a captive breeding program. So from 1988 to 2004, there have been eight reintroduction sites established. And there's two types of sites, fenced and unfenced. The black stars are all the unfenced sites. Now, some of these populations fail to establish at these sites. Other ones, they, they established but later went extinct. And the problem with these sites was that they relied heavily on fox control through baiting and shooting. So now we focus on fox-free areas for bandicoots. And those three purple stars you can see there is where we have fence sites. So we have three sites where we've established populations of bandicoots. So these three sites combined only offer around 740 hectares of fox-free bandicoot habitat. And we work off a conservative estimate of one bandicoot per hectare. So using these three sites alone isn't going to remove these survived bandicoots from the threatened species list. But what they have done in conjunction with the captive breeding program has prevented their extinction. A fourth site has been built and it's the biggest fence reserve in Victoria at around 1,000 hectares. Bandicoots were finally released into Tiverton last November. And this is our sure thing. Yeah, we are confident that bandicoots will establish at Tiverton and we could have at least 1,000 bandicoots there. But we wanted to be able to put bandicoots somewhere else that didn't depend so much on, on infrastructure like fences. And that's when we started to think about islands. And the only one at the time when we started to discuss islands back in 2007 was French Island. This is Victoria's largest island. It's always been fox-free, but there is a feral cat population on French Island. So we knew that in order to release bandicoots onto French Island, we would have to get community support. And that's simply because we knew that bandicoots would forage across private land. So without strong community support, the project would never work. There was three things. Firstly, they were concerned that eastern biobandicoots would cause the extinction of an invertebrate. But we did invertebrate surveys across the island to find out what's actually here. The second thing they were concerned about was that if they had eastern biobandicoots on their land, that they would then be restricted in how they could manage their land. So to address this concern, we actually removed the eastern biobandicoot from the EPBC list, the EPBC Act, across private land on French Island. And the third concern was eastern barred bandicoots would become overabundant and damage the natural values of the island. And this concern comes from koalas. And to address that one, well, we knew that from our fence sites that bandicoots weren't becoming overabundant and causing any damage there. 
But to further address it, we released bandicoots onto Churchill Island. Now, Churchill is just a 52-hectare island, which is connected to Phillip Island by a concrete bridge. And so in 2015, we released 20 bandicoots onto Churchill Island. Now, half of Churchill is farmland, the other is bushland. So it's representative of the habitat types on French Island too. And there's also no foxes and no cats on Churchill Island. And as we expected, bandicoots did reach carrying capacity pretty quickly on Churchill. They now fluctuate around 120 to 150 bandicoots across the island at any one time. There's been no evidence of them causing any negative impact on the flora, the fauna or the farmland on Churchill. So back to the French island community and we created many opportunities where community members could come and talk to us about bandicoots. But we still had some work to do with gaining the community support. And so in the meantime, Phillip Island Nature Parks managed to eradicate foxes from Phillip Island and that then made Phillip Island suitable for an eastern by bandicoot release. Now, Phillip Island also has a feral cat population that is controlled to protect the little penguins. So we weren't sure if we could actually establish an eastern wild bandicoot population in the presence of feral cats. So bandicoots were released onto Summerlands Peninsula. To me, Phillip Island looks like a dolphin. So if you look at the nose of the dolphin, that is Summerlands Peninsula. And it turns out that cats don't prevent the establishment of eastern vibe bandicoots. So it's been a real success on Phillip Island. And that then gave us the confidence to release bandicoots onto French Island in 2019. It was the biggest bandicoot release we had ever done. 74 bandicoots were released onto French Island. And since the release, we've been monitoring the bandicoots with remote cameras. And we often get images of bandicoots with bulging pouches. Almost two years on, bandicoots have established on French Island. But why stop there? Because we've got another project going on at the zoo in conjunction with the University of Tasmania, which could see eastern bar bandicoots return to the wild on mainland Victoria once again. And that's our guardian dog project. Now, these guys, Marema dogs, have been used for millennia to protect livestock from predators. We knew that we wouldn't be able to bond them to bandicoots. Now, bandicoots, they're small, they're nocturnal, they're solitary. They're just not going to be very exciting or interesting to a dog that really needs a job to do. So instead, we'll bond them to sheep. We train the dogs to ignore the bandicoots because if we hadn't have done this, once the bandicoots are released, the dogs may become curious about the bandicoots that could have undesired impacts. After many years' work, we released 20 bandicoots into a site at Skipton and another 20 at a site in Dunkeld. So it's still really, really early on in this project. So we don't know if it's going to work. But if it does, it means that all of a sudden we've got, you know, we could release bandicoots on properties across southwest Victoria. And instead of building expensive predator barrier fences, we can then protect the bandicoots using Roma dogs instead. So after 33 years of recovery effort, Eastern Bar Bandicoots are well on their way to recovery. But it's not just down to those organisations. It's also the volunteers that help us monitor Bandicoot populations and the communities that have embraced Bandicoots on their islands. Now, you might be sitting at home thinking, that's great, but how do I get involved in, in saving threatened species? Well, there are things that you can do right now. Uh, if you head to the Zoos Victoria Fighting Extinction webpage, there's several campaigns that we've got. One campaign that's just launched for the second year in a row is Moth Tracker. And this is all about the adorable mountain pygmy possum. These guys are the only hibernating marsupial in the world. And just about now, as the snow is melting, the possums are starting to wake up. And they have one main food source, and that's the bogong moth. But what's been noticed in recent years is that these bogong moths, they're not arriving in the huge numbers that they're used to. And we want to know why. We want to know where they're going. And they're possibly getting disorientated because of light pollution. So if you do see bogong moths, take a photo, upload them to the moth tracker, and let's help save the pygmy possum together. And that's it for me.